Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Devotional, brought to you by Golden Isles Primitive Baptist Fellowship and Heartfloss TV. I'm V. Vernon Eckleberry, and I have a lesson for you this morning entitled, Nearer My God to Thee. Now let's sing, Nearer My God to Thee. Nearer My God to Me. Those are the words of uh, Sarah Flower Adams, and she wrote that song in 1841. The theme of her song is uh, Jacob, who was seemingly all alone in the wilderness, with nothing but rocks for his pillows and the hard desert floor for his bed. And uh, the song follows the theme as to the dream that he had and the angels ascending and descending on the ladder that reached into heaven. Our lesson is taken this morning both from uh, that account of Jacob and also uh, the uh, instance where Jesus introduces that theme. You remember last week, we had a lesson entitled, The Best is Yet to Come. And uh, it was taken from the uh, account of the wedding in Cana. And Jesus was there with the disciples and his mother Mary was there. And he performed this wonderful miracle. When the wine was gone, he turned water into wine. And of course, the governor of the feast commended the bridegroom for uh, saving the best till last. And, and we found that that's what God does. Always the best is yet to come. But that whole thing was a demonstration of what Jesus had said early to one Nathaniel. And let me read that for you. You remember in that second chapter of John, it begins, and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. Well, the third day after what? It's the third day after this encounter with Nathaniel. I'll read it to you. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, 
and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. And Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. You know, that's an important doctoral point there. Uh, preceding any uh, work on behalf of those who would bring people to Christ and those who seemingly discover Christ, Christ has already done a prior work. And that was the case with uh, Nathaniel on this occasion. So Nathaniel was, was really uh, quite taken back by that. And he answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. And Jesus answered him and said unto him, uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? And thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. In other words, Jesus said, if, if you think it was something that I saw you and knew you before you ever came to me, uh, you haven't seen anything yet. The, the, the best is yet to come. And so it is then. Jesus is referring back to the time of Jacob when he saw this uh, great portrayal of a ladder reaching into heaven and angels ascending and descending. So let's, let's turn to that back in Genesis chapter 28. If you would, turn in your Bibles, please. Jacob, on his first night away from home, was lonely, uncertain, unsure about what lay ahead of him. Uh, his brother Esau was behind him, seeking his life, and this great unknown is before him. And under those circumstances, he lays down to sleep. Now let me read to you the scriptures found in Genesis 28, beginning at verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. That's the destination uh, where he is to go and find a wife, according to the instructions of his father. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones in that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it and unto thy seed. And then uh, later uh, the Lord says in this dream, Behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land for I will not leave thee uh, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. 
So that was a, a wonderful, wonderful dream that Jacob had. And, and, and God reveals to him just what he needed to know in that, on, on that uncertain venture that he was beginning. And of course, uh, afterwards in the morning, Jacob rose up early and took the stone that he'd put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. And he called the name of the place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. Well, God already said that, that he would do that. But Jacob, being human, shows his humanity and tries to make this little bargain with God. But God is a forgiving God, and he understands our frame. He understood Jacob's frame. And then Jacob goes on and says, And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. And of course, that place would be Bethel, the house of God. You know, I was thinking maybe you too, someone watching this this morning, maybe you also have set out to places where you've never been. I've uh, been on adventures like that more than once. Maybe some new experience in your life is subjecting you to something that you've not encountered before. Maybe you don't feel equipped for the challenge. Jacob certainly didn't, as he lay his head down on that stony pillow that night. Life is a journey that continually brings new things. And if there's one thing that we can be certain of, it is that things will change. There is change ahead in our life. It's kind of like the weather in South Georgia. They say if you don't like the weather today, just stick around because it will change tomorrow. I was in a hospital in Savannah, and it was the first time that I had ever been admitted to a hospital. And in the other bed in the room... Uh, there was an elderly African-American who I found out was also a preacher. And uh, my, how that man could pray. But he said something that I'll never forget. I, I really think that God brought us two together there in that hospital room. He retrieved a Gideon Bible from the bedside stand and uh, he turned and read from Job chapter 14, verses 14 and 15. And this is what he read. If a man die, Job said, shall he live again? And of course, that was a rhetorical question. Job knew the answer, but he is making a point here. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Now, of course, Job on that occasion was uh, speaking of his final change. He felt his impending death was upon him. But that word that he used for change covers more than that, means much more than that. It comes from a Hebrew word that gives the idea of one thing following another. Change upon change upon change, or changing course. And uh, Job is saying that all my days I wait until the next change comes. Until my final change comes in death. You know, things change. 
But one thing never changes. God assured the progeny of Jacob many, many years later of this promise. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. That's in Malachi 3, 6. Now, I change not. Things will change all around you almost on a daily basis. But I will not change, God says. That's a matter of great assurance. And because of that, God says, you're, you're not going to be consumed. This thing is not going to do you in. So I'm your God, and I change not. And you won't be consumed either. That college SAT may offer the greatest challenge of your life. That new job may overwhelm you at first, and caring and providing for your family may seem like an impossible task in these uh, uh, tough times that we are living in. The unforeseen illness or setback may have caught you totally unprepared. Losing your companion after a, a lifetime of loving and marital joy. Uh, it may seem like that's the end, that there's nothing left for you. Drawing near that time when that final change comes, of which Job spake, may be a time of uncertainty and apprehension for someone who is listening this morning. But one thing about the changes that come, to a believer in Christ, this is an absolute. Whether we see the change as a good thing or a bad thing, God would have us to know, as with Jacob, I am with you always. I will see you safely through this new thing. And I will set my angels over you. That's the promise of that ladder extending into heaven and the angels ascending and descending. That uh, uh, is a promise that is reiterated by the psalmist in Psalm 91. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And that doesn't mean that some things are not going to uh, be a challenge or be seemingly overwhelming, more than you can handle. But what it means is this. Nothing is going to come your way that is going to finally defeat you. And here is why. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Just think of that ladder ascending into heaven and angels ascending and descending wherever you go. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone and so forth. As wrote Sarah Flower Adams, there let the way appear, steps unto heaven. All that thou sendest me in mercy given, angels to beckon me, nearer my God to thee. Now may the God of all grace be with you until we meet again.